Hello, my name is Chiso Fred, and you're watching Blueprint Africa TV. I have here with me a seasoned columnist, an experienced writer, and the general manager of Omega FM in Anambra State, Mr. Samuel Adrian Ajo for AKA Super Sam. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Thank you. Okay, so we are here to discuss the increasing tension in the southeastern region, the IPOB movement, the Masob movement. Just of late, as of today, the 15th of September 2017, the Nigerian military, the Nigerian army declared Operation Python Dance in the whole southeastern region. So, how would you explain Operation Python Dance to a layman? Well, Operation Python Dance is a, a military exercise that. Um, military organizes, it, it comes in different names and is designed for different purposes. We've had Operation uh, Crocodile Smile, we've had Operation uh, Python Dance One. Yes. Now, every time the military organizes this exercise, they are for two reasons. Number one, where there is a flashpoint of violence, they try to nip it in the butt, so they go, they organize their military gear together, especially those that are based in Nigeria, because we know that a lot of them are peacekeeping operations abroad. So they gather the rest of them and then they try to quell this uprising. When they are done with that, they usually leave behind, you know, few, uh, you know, military officers around. And then we have uh, Operation uh, Crocodile Smile. We've had that uh, in Nigeria too. Python Dance 1 was done in the Niger Delta uh, during that period. So because of this latest happening, specifically in Abia State, in not, not, not just South East, but Abia State, expect, there is, uh, that's why the army, the military, are coming together to organize um, a military exercise. Now, this exercise is not only supposed to be for the army, it's supposed to be the entire military force. This is something very close to what's happening in um, North Korea, South Korea, US, where there are joint military exercises. The second reason why they uh, organize this is to test their show of force. When you mean by show of force, it's what uh, US and uh, South Korea is doing is just in case Kim Jong-un decides one day to misbehave, they just go around, take their uh, ships, take their military weapons, test their weapons in the Gulf of Korea Gulf which is like a stretch of ocean between the two countries. So it's the same thing that is happening now. It's also a show of forces to also prepare their military uh, regiment in case there is internal crisis. The constitution also allows, uh, gives the army, the military, uh, the mandate of protecting the territorial integrity of Nigeria. So that is one of the reasons why we had this Operation Python down. If there is another crisis in any other part of Nigeria, maybe in the next year or so, you'll hear of another military exercise with another name. Yeah, uh, when they had the problem in the uh, in the Niger Delta, the Calabar area, the the Bakasi area, they also had theirs. So every time they want to do something like that, they bring up something. If you go to the northeast, they have had so many operations there. Yeah, so it's it's a regular thing, but now they are bringing it down south to the southeast because of possible security threats they are noticing. That's why Python dance is now, but. Um, what I am not too comfortable is why Nigerians are seeing it as if it's the first time this is happening. Abia State to me is the most one of the most militarized states in the entire southeast of Nigeria. If you travel through Abia State, if you see six roadblocks, you see four of them are military. It's like that. So it's nothing new. They've had crisis. Uh, they had uh, when when uh, they were kidnapping in Abba, especially some time ago. The military came in and they had the same operation, and the kidnapping went down. So it's not thing new for us to see these kind of things. We always see them going around. But we know that the body language of the Nigerian government is leaning towards a particular person, and that's why we have Python Dance 2. OK, okay so you just mentioned that this Operation Python Dance is to nip this, let's say, uprising in the board. Do you think this is long overdue? I mean, OPO, IPOB protests started way before now, so why now? Why now? Um, well, I think um, what has happened over time was that I, I feel there was a silent observing of what's going on. They tried to see how this will start. You know, just a few guys running around with, you know, uniforms and all that doesn't really cause any problem. 
But now, when you start hearing of media reports of some people forming secret service, you hear PC pictures of armies being formed. You see guys calling themselves guys 82 battalion. They call themselves everything. They are marching on the streets. In an, an army, a national army, a national military would regard any other organization calling itself a military outfit as an enemy state. Yes, because it's threat to national security. Because they feel, ah, we are the army. Which other army is this one? So that's how it started. And right now, I have a strong feeling that this had to be done now because it starts today. 17, uh, 15th September is going to end 15th of 14th October. Now, 14th October, how many weeks is it from the governorship elections in Anambra State? So they need to do this so that all the talk about uh, if no election in Anambra, election will kill anybody, anyone that comes out, that is also very timely because it, didn't, it is not, a, it's not ill-timed, it's well-timed. If we did, if this Python dance came, let's say, 14th October, November 18th is the election. Supposing it came 1st November, we would say it's because of that, of the elections. We, they, they would obviously expect a mass movement of young people, of IPOB agitators moving towards Anambra. Good. There's a border between Anambra and Abia State. It's, it's easier. So when you see this happening, we should know that it was well timed because you also look at it um, we've seen a lot of ipob members going around in buses going yeah. interstate and all that rallies and all that and the military and the army and the air force and the police and the civil defense and all of them nobody came out to stop them we've been hearing flashes of they shot someone we found that it wasn't true they have been going around unhindered so that means when they are going from say enugu to abakeliki where, which was one of the biggest rallies uh, Namdi Kano had, they passed through military checkpoints and they allowed them pass. So it was when the time comes, we will now know what to do. They didn't say, let us call a curfew in every five southeastern states. The only curfew was in Abba and Omar here. And it's not the entire Abia state they are focusing on. They are focusing on two key points, Abba which is the hotbed of the IPOB agitation, and Umar here, which is you know, the locality of where Namikano comes from. So that's actually where we are. Okay, you know, there's been a lot of controversy surrounding this issue, especially on Twitter, conversations have been going on, and people are alleging that this Operation Python dance is because Namdekano flouted all his bail conditions. You know, he was, the base, one of his bail conditions was that he should be in a garden of more than 10 people, he should be engaged in hate speech, and etc., which he has flouted all. So do you think this Operation Python dance is in response to him flouting his bail conditions? Yeah, uh, well, we cannot dispute that. We cannot say it is, we can't say it's not, because the coincidence of Python dance being in the East and also, of course, there, there are some other correspondents that are flying around social media about the Anambra State government giving an old airport for military exercises and all that stuff, you know. So you can't say to me that um, Python dance is going to be a movement of troops from the North towards the East. Python dance in the East and military troops in the East doing military exercises. So if you if they say it is he flaunted his bail orders, we know he did. That's the thing. And that's the, that's the thing I'm not too comfortable with when you, you talk about it on social media and people question whether there's a constitution. They question whether it was legitimate to arrest him. They yes. question... Yes, there's been a lot of arguments saying it's outside the constitution, saying it's not legal to impose a siege in a whole region, in a whole south region. You look at it... I, I always know Nigerians are very emotional. They are very sentimental. If somebody, okay, Enugu, just a few days ago, we heard of an explosion. Social media, the grandmother of all media, carried the story like we now thought, wow, this probably a terrorist attack in Enugu, until it was revealed that it was a battery something that happened with battery. But the story had already gone around. So if somebody would call me, are you in Enugu? Oh, I had this explosion. And you'd be like, siege. There are some big words we use, yeah. you know, and, and we don't know that when, it, when we do that, it makes people more scared. Yeah. 
because it happened in Abia and Omar here. Is now a siege on the rest of us? Is it happening in uh, Bakaliki? Is it or where it's still quiet ex after what happened in the market? Enugu is <laughs> nothing is happening in Enugu. We're still moving around. But when you say siege, it is a very big word. We always we always want to magnify a lot of stuff. Okay, so you're trying to say that Nigerians are magnifying the situation we right know now. How to magnify stuff? We are very good in magnifying anything so that's why when i see certain conversations i say siege come on you know if it's a siege then we should not be talking here we should be bombs flying around and all that it's happening in abba anuma here we are also waiting to see the report of how many casualties were suffered from the side of the military and the ipob how many people had gone down we have seen videos of people uh, being put in the mud, being punished by the military. We've seen all that. And the military came out and said it's exuberance over exuberance of the military, uh, which is everywhere. In fact, I was saying to someone that we have encouraged the exuberance of the military. For instance, if you had an, a cousin who was in the army, and you know he came back from NDA and he's still hot and fresh and he's green and green, and somebody slapped your girlfriend. Naturally, in your mind, you will not think twice. Your cousin is around, someone slapped your girlfriend, you're calling your cousin. So the idea is, oh, it's now a big thing. You know, we, we have encouraged it. So the, 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 the power they are wielding is nothing new. We've seen people, frog jump by military, they'll ask you to frog jump for no just reason. I mean, it's something that we are now used to. So however they want to put it, however the military wants to excuse it, oh, uh, we're not planning to, for this to happen, we're just driving past, coincidentally <laughs> driving in front of Namdekano's house, and we saw people throwing stones. Yeah. Whether they shot at them or it wasn't shot, it is a function of who was there. Who was there? Whoever tells the story first is the ones that people believe. So, um, the, 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 the storylines in Nigeria are usually magnified to sell news. On my Facebook page there, I wrote things about the fact that the blame for everything, the agitation, this crisis we are going through now, because no one is looking at the fact that Joss is now under crisis. Yeah. Joss has nothing to do with uh, Abia State, has nothing to do with IPOB, but the reprisal attack is now happening. Now, we, the media, created this. The entire thing, we created it. We give our page, our front headlines to this. We talk about it. Social media, we are all over it. Some people are now professionals and going to dig up old stories and making yes. them look new. And printing them as if they are happening fresh. And the, the conveyors of these stories are the ones who are standing at the newspaper stand who just look at the headline and debate it and explode. And they, and they go to their houses in their keke, they pass the knowledge, and they go to the drinking parlor, and they escalate the whole thing. And it is an invention of the media. So Nnamdi Kanu has the media to thank for everything. If Nnamdi Kanu sneezes now, the media will carry it. If IPOB members jump from here to here, and a policeman just happened to pass, the media will carry it. So it is a, it's a function of we, the media, carried it. Yes, and we didn't say anything was wrong about it. We wanted to sell our papers, we wanted to sell our blogs, we wanted to sell ourselves as current OAPs. If you find out more conversations on political programs now, it's IPOB agitation. They don't have any other content. That is the main thing. So that's it. Okay, but let's, you know, the major reason why this whole thing started in the first place is that Namdi Kanu wanted Biafra for the Eastern States. Is this, how do I put it, is this feasible in today's Nigeria? Is it feasible? Uh, there are several things that are feasible. That is not one. It's not feasible now. It might not be feasible in the next 10 years or 15 years. Why? Because what you're asking for is, it, it takes a lot to actually form that. Yes. You're asking for a separate country. Do you know what it takes to get the United Nations to get how many countries to sign off that you are now a separate country? Can you prove, based on what you have been claiming, that we are going through a lot of marginalization, going through a lot of... I understand marginalization. It's only said marginalization when you have, like a family, you have 
six boys one pot of food. Not everyone will be able to dig their hands into the pot at the same time. Well, you know, the, the central of the topic is that the Igbos, okay, so let's say the East is marginalized politically, economically, and in business. Let me ask you a question. Uh, sorry to ask you the question you're asking me. But how are we marginalized politically? How, wait, how are we marginalized economically? When we have the powerhouse of the Nigerian economy virtually in the hands of the Igbos, how? What happens if we throw, God forbid, throw a bomb into Alaba market? What happens if we throw a bomb into Onisha market? The Igbos have held and are still holding the powerhouse of the economy in their hands. How are you being marginalized? Are we being told, don't buy anything from an Igbo man? We are billionaires. If you go to Anambra states, billionaires. How are you marginalized? We are marginalized politically because we voted the wrong person. The only time we have been crying marginalization is when Jonathan lost the election. We were eating this cake well during the PDP years. Now Buhari has come in with his own plan. We are not in the picture. We are not happy about it. And we are marginalized politically how? We have the sensitive positions in terms of leadership, ministerial positions in the past how many years. Our daughters have held positions as Minister of Finance. We have done so many things. But today we are crying imagine how politically how? We have political parties that are Igbo parties. Nobody has said don't vote them because they are not. Why we are crying marginalization is because the cake this time is not shared the way we want it to be shared. Let's be very honest. I was asking people to say, oh, we don't have enough states. How many of our states are actually viable? You're asking for one more state that will make it balanced. Okay, if you make a six states southeast region, will it make us richer? It won't. It's just going to give another person an opportunity to become governor, another group of people to collect from the national cake that doesn't exist. How many of our states are viable inside? How many of them are be able to make their own money, pay their worker salaries, increase investment? How many? So the question is, we should look inwards first. Form a Biafra of our minds. Form a Biafra of our minds. Freedom from our own selves. We are not even united traditionally. Everywhere is an autonomous community. So supposing we form Biafra tomorrow, one guy from uh, Nambra says, well, we are tired of this Biafra. We want to form up. We are very autonomous. We are very independent. So we, the, this agitation started because we felt that we are unfairly treated. It is, if you go back in history, in the 60s, 50s, 60s, our brothers have been dealt with in the north. It's not today. It's an old thing. It's been happening. Good. So when we start bringing up those wounds and we're shouting Biafra, Biafra, and I, w I was really not happy when they told everyone to sit at home because it's the first time we've told people to do that. You're trying to celebrate 50 years of what has happened 50 years ago. But how many of those heroes who died are being honored by us here? How many of us remember the, the people who died? How many of our children, how many of our schools are being told, go to the war museum and go and see how it was 50 years ago? How many of our schools are being taught how to speak our own languages? If you want to do a 50 year celebration, sit down and say, after 50 years, we are still here. Look at how we are. We are richer than we were 50 years ago. But we told everyone to sit down. How productive is that? And we are able people. We don't sit down. So at the end of the day, you look at it and it is lopsided. Every part of Nigeria is marginalized. If you want to start from the middle belt, you will find that they are gross. Go to the Niger Delta. Somebody woke up one morning and said, our oil is not being invested here. One military director said, string him up and kill him. Ken Sariwa died. And it's still happening. We are still having their farmlands taken away from them by, by oil spillage. And they're not being given their own due benevolence. And you say that you're being marginalized. Do you know how many other parts of Nigeria are not even remembered? The Igbos, we are the third largest, or is it the second largest? Whichever one, they consider us one of the big three. What of the other minorities? The ones that have the oil under them and the, no one is remembering them. We had a flood in Benue. How many of us, as loving as we were, 
contributed to them. So if you're saying marginalization, go to other tribes and ask them, they'll tell you what it means to be marginalized. Because we are not really marginalized, we are just feeling left out. So when you want to form a nation based on that, it doesn't make sense. Supposing 2019, suppose in 2019, the Igbos now have a greater share, like they did before 2015. So what, what happens? Who's marginalized? Okay, that's a very valid point. But there's this video that was trending on social media about army officials escorting Muslims to the mosque, waiting for them to pray and then escorting them back. Now, it caused a lot of outrage because when the Arewa youths gave the Igbos in the north the October 1st deadline, there was nobody escorting them to the north. During all those crises, there was no army escorting Igbos to say to the church and all that. So people are seeing it as partiality, if, I, if I'm allowed to use that word. So what do you have to say about that? Definitely. It's not, it's not a new that's palatable to hear. If I'm, if as a journalist as I am, if I see a video like that, I want to authenticate when it was made, when it was actually made. If it's a recent thing and they're being escorted, why? I would be up to say, okay, um, our, our own brothers are going to church and they're being killed. Why aren't you supporting? It's a valid point. It shows one fundamental flaw in Nigeria. Very fundamental. Let me digress a little bit. How fundamental that flaw is, is misplaced priorities. We have a lot of misplaced priorities in Nigeria. Oh, okay, is it because you don't have a war that you're sending the military to be escorting people? It's the same way we are using the policemen to be carrying bags for our politicians' wives. It's the same thing. We don't want to use the people for the right things. And someone who feels he's in power can easily just send, go and protect them. Are they being targeted? Are the Muslims being targeted? If they are, why don't you give them to the police to protect? Why must it be the army? So if the army is being used that way, somebody needs to speak up. But in, in, in that context, it look like an unfair treatment, but we must investigate what happened, how it happened, and why they needed to be deployed. The military, the army now is becoming very vocal. Their spokesman is becoming, they are now hot on social media, you know. They are doing everything that IPOB is not doing. They are speaking out. They are speaking out. Not the Kanu is speaking, but the army is speaking. So when you see one man speaking, say, okay, okay, he said this. But when you see the army speaking, you'll be like, okay. So if the army can be challenged to ask, how did this happen? And they must respond. And that's how democracy is. All right, so I'd like us to track some conversations from Twitter. Like, I was able to get some major key points. There's this guy, Chuku Debelu. He said, the only reason why I don't support secession is because I don't think it's a viable alternative, not because I believe in Nigeria. It's, it's uh, Secession doesn't work. It won't work. I, I told people this. Um, you want to leave Nigeria, but you still have people from Nigeria, in Nigeria, within Nigeria, with the same Nigerian mentality. When you move to your other nation, it doesn't change anything. It's just like someone wrote, it's just like removing, changing the tires of a car that has a fault in an engine. It's the same thing. So you want to secede, why? What is the general reason you want to secede? Are you being marginalized inside your own land? I'm always asking people, who is the governor of Enugu State? Who is the governor of Abia State? Is it a northerner? It's not a northerner. We are the ones who are causing our own problems. So fix it inside here. Secession is not the answer. It's not the answer because, I mean, where do you, where do you, want, where do you want to go to? We're moving to a new nation. It's the same place. The same bad roads will still, the same people will, will be in this nation. It's not like when you cut out of Nigeria, all of a sudden, water will start flowing in Enugu. It becomes a garden of reading. And our mentality is not, it's not, we are not like that. Okay, there's this girl, Adol Babi, she said, I'm from Abia State, I'm Igbo. I don't know what the hell IPOB is agitating for, and I don't support it. I am Nigerian, God be with us all. I feel that majority of Igbos, I feel the IPOB does not represent every Igbo. They don't represent Igbos, but the way they are going about it, makes you feel, if you're an outsider, you feel IPOB is an evil thing. Not everyone understands it. Not everyone agrees with it. But we shouldn't be generalized as, okay, we are all IPOB. A lot of people who sat home that day were sitting home out of fear. Yes. We are not sitting home. 
I went out of my house. I drove around. I mean, come on. Tell me to sit at home. Are you the one providing my food? You're not the one providing my food. Federal go- state government can tell me sit at home. Yeah. I'll sit. The environmental sanction, I sit at home. But you tell me sit at home. Why do I sit at home? So it's not everyone who believes this. Not everyone. And it shouldn't be misconstrued that it's everyone. The unfortunate thing is that the people who believe it are not able, they are not willing to sell the message as they should. If you have a conversation with someone that supports it, you get more insults, you get more targets, people will abuse you. I've been the subject of abuse so many times. Because you, you, you differ in opinion. That's wrong. You are supposed to actually sell me the idea, evangelize to me, and then I understand it, and I go with it. But if I say, what is Nambikano saying? You say, you're an idiot, God forbid, you're Nigerian, you're a Nigerian slave. When did I become a slave? Okay, we conducted an official, an unofficial poll on Twitter. We said Nigerian Army launched Operation Python Dance in the Southeast to curb actions of separatist group. Do you agree? And we had over seventy-three percent saying no, it's not necessary. Because the options we are yes, it's necessary. No, it's not necessary. Seventy-three percent said it's not necessary. Because the army has not been able to communicate their objectives clearly, effectively. Let me take you back to a point in our history, not not too far away. There's a guy that was operating the EFCC account. Yes. F. King Shaw. The guy was operating the account. And if you use Twitter, and using Twitter especially, which he was operating, you will have a different mentality about EFCC. Yes. But the army has not been successful in that. They have not been able to sell that message. So people won't understand it. Because it's, it's, they don't just like, everyone is scared. That, that poll you saw there are people who are afraid of what will happen. It's not necessary. I don't want problem, I don't want, that's how we are. I don't want wahala. So we would definitely know. But if this polling, if this poll was done when the army didn't come into Abia State, yes. if this polling was done and said, do you think we should force our way out of Nigeria? You see 99% of people say yes. And most of the people who say yes are people who are the IPOB followers. But now they are seeing guns. They are seeing the things that they were saying that, oh, burn down Nigeria if this happened. Kill this person in Nigeria. Kill a passenger. Burn down Nigeria. If they arrest me, kill so, 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 so. Now we are seeing it. We are now changing our tune. Unfortunately, we cannot act as victims now. The IPOB cannot act as victims. They are going around burning um, police stations rampaging in Port River State. So, if you had come into the uh, Omar here, Nambikano's house, with a military tank, and everybody stood there and held their hands and said, You can't pass, they wouldn't have shot you. They wouldn't shoot you. If you had done everything you want to do and you instructed your followers, don't retaliate. The world will see it that, oh, these people are actually being targeted. But you couldn't control the boys. They are the educated ones, the Facebook IPOB guys, and they're the ground IPOB guys. The ground IPOB guys didn't understand it. Went around burning things, causing mayhem. So we cannot claim to be victims now. Okay, sir, there's this last tweet that I'd like to quickly read out. This guy said, IPOB is a terrorist movement under the cover of Biafra. No saying Igbo will attack innocent Nigerians in the south is burn mugs or kill policemen. What do you have to say about Yeah, uh, terrorist group, terrorist group is like I said, a uh, strong word. I, 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 I heard military, according to what they said, the military has called them in a terrorist group. Um, it's strong to call them a terrorist group. It's too early to start naming people terrorist groups. Um, do they understand what they are asking for is a big question. If I am interested in Biafra, what, what do we really stand for? We should leave Nigeria. A lot of young people, every time I write about Biafra, I write about Namdi Kanu, and I read other timelines of friends of mine who are speaking up against it, and I see insults, so I see bad people making cuss words, abusing the writer. I usually go to the p- profiles of these people, students, young people, still living with their parents. They don't understand the implications and the ramifications. They don't even understand what it means to even create a new state in Nigeria. 
I was educated about that by the present Deputy Senate President, uh, Ike Kuremadu, who said it in a public forum, about the fact that every House of Assembly in Nigeria has to sign off and agree, plus the National Assembly, and there must be a process of creating a new state. All the states in Nigeria are created by the military. No civilian, except, okay, a few, no, most of them military. You had people just, uh, uh, Yakub Gawan came around, Muritala Mohammed came around, yeah. everyone was creating, Babangida came around, Abacha came around, everyone was creating states. We have never really done that in, in, in civilian era. We don't even know how to do it because the problem, the, the, the process is going to be long. Not to talk about creating a nation, forming a new nation. How? What are the land borders? You need to ask yourself, if you want a Biafra, what, what will be our economy? What will it be based on? How many states will form Biafra? So a lot of people now will watch what we are doing, and they will, of course, they will insult. But the question is, if you have, have you asked yourself, if you are forming a nation, on what premise are we forming it? How do we run the economy of the country? Where do we get our resources? How viable are the five southeastern states if they are going to be the only because other states are saying they are not part of it. How viable are we? Are we going to be depending on oil from where? The deposits, a few of them in Anam uh, Anambra, maybe Anambra, Enugu bordering with Kogi State. Rivers is saying they are not going to be part of it. The only agitation going on in BIPOB is in Port Harcourt. Go and do that in the creeks of Niger Delta. You can't try it. So what is going to be a mainstay of our economy? What is going to be our... Uh, how is our foreign policy going to look like? How do we interact in t as a nation? How do we form ourselves? Uh, the, the composite parts of the nation, who is going to be the president? How does the president come? Is it parliamentary system? Is it presidential system? Yeah. The average uh, Biafra supporter doesn't know that. They're just saying, just give us the place. Yeah, just... You know, it's, it's, it's like biblical. God, oh, give us a king. Give us a king. God says, okay, give, give him one guy there. Saul, give him Saul. You know? So we are asking for something we don't really understand. I ask myself, they say we want to rule ourselves. I say, who is the governor of your state? You don't even know what he's doing. Who is the counselor in your ward? You don't know. You don't even know how much local government areas are receiving. You don't know how, why the taxes, they come and tax one shop in front of you. Where is it going to? Yes. We don't question those things. Is it when we form our own country, we'll start questioning it? We have left accountability. We have left reality. We're asking for something we are not even prepared to. If you look at it, okay, if you're going to form a nation, what will be the, what will be, who, which, which of our universities will we call Ivy League schools? How many of us school in schools here? How many of our kids go to schools here? How many, uh, which are the, what's the health policy? What's the education policy? What's the economic policy? What's the uh, policy for youth? We have not even thought about that because how many of us even know the laws in the states we live? So when we're asking for something like that, think well, if we are going to be given this country now, how do we manage? We're going to kill ourselves in three months, three months, because everybody's going to be struggling for positions yes. that we don't even know where the money is coming from. How many of the five southern eastern states, how many of them don't depend too much on federal allocation for? If we actually go back inwards and ask, what have we been doing with the resources we have? Who are our leaders? 2019 is coming, money bags will determine. How many young men who actually have a vision? You have, imagine you see a young man who is 25, 30, the young, not too young to run Bill is out. So imagine you see a 25 year old guy who is doing well for himself, he started a business, he's doing well, and you follow this track record, his family, they look like people that have integrity. Will you support that boy to go for State House of Assembly? You won't. Would you even say, okay, this boy, you have a good future. I have uh, 10 million that I'm not using. Just go and buy a form. You know, because I know that you're going to go and do well. Yeah. And you are, I, if you misbehave, I will meet your father. Your son is misbehaving. What's happening? But we will still give this mandate back to the money banks. And we'll be looking at Abuja as if Abuja is our problem. Abuja is not my problem. The man who is supposed to be leading here is my problem. The reason why we cannot approach them is because we didn't elect them. The political godfathers gave them. We can't even challenge them. So why are we challenging the ones in Abuja when we can't challenge the ones here? So we should look inside and form a Biafra of our own mind. How many of us here, 
except for people in Anambra State. How many of us here are bringing back investments back to our states? How many? I mean, you want to tell me that we don't even have enough money? Two billionaires in, in Nigeria, in Southeast, can build the roads here and put toll gates and make his money back. Ten billionaires can join money and go to their contacts in China, come and put a railway that goes from Aba all the way around the Southeast, connect to Enugu International Airport. Anything you make in Aba, guess to Enugu, Olincha, guess to Enugu, fly out. Is I don't know. I, 10, 15 years. If you make the Southeast a Dubai, make Southeast a California, the day you want to stand up and say, ah, we are tired, the country will say, oh, yeah, yeah, calm down. Now, what is our tax uh, 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 tax history? Go and ask the people who, who collect us, Nigerian, uh, the internal revenue. How much tax do they get from the Southeast? So supposing we have our own country, how do we tell people to pay tax? We have our own person owning the power uh, power holding company, his own section. It's not a northern that has it. It's an Igbo man like us. Are we having power that we need? We have another brother who is into geometric uh, power, uh, Professor Bat Naji. He has his own independent power. Position. Are we patronizing him? Are we patronizing our own things? Innocent is there with all these cars. Are the Igbo men buying the Igbo man's things? Yeah. So when we become a nation, we buy our own things. Everything we are wearing. It's just recently now we are now sewing our own clothes. Yeah. Well, we don't buy shoes from a bar. No, you want a Gucci. But it's not helping us. So we need to look inside and ask ourselves, we are the ones hurting our own selves. I go to people's places, I would say, ah, the road to this man's house is bad. But this man can find a way to dress. They say, no, he has Jeep. That is it. That is the excuse we give. He has a Jeep. So we need to start thinking like we are trading. We are very good in trading. Why don't we trade investment into our places? Like somebody said on radio once, we buy 2016 cars from the U.S., from everywhere, but we don't even buy 1994 cents from them. We don't. Why don't you bring the investment back home? Why don't we see the big buildings here? Why don't we see our brothers engage? If all our brothers were engaged, I don't know our younger ones were engaged, do you think anyone will come out on the street and be protesting? When I have a big factory, I have 2,000 workers, they are all earning their living. And somebody will drop and say he wants to go and agitate. How? They, most of them don't want to work. Some of them who are working are not even thinking what they are doing is important. Yeah. If you want to cut out of this country, our pride is too much. We are too united as a country. That is the problem we have. We can't break now. It's not possible. Oh, no, you, you sit down here. Your gate man is a northerner. The man, he's selling uh, small things, chin chin biscuit and all. Aboki at the gate. The man who sews your shoes is a northerner. Your best tailor is probably a northerner. And you are an Igbo man here. The same thing that happens to us over there is the same thing. We are so intertwined. Our lives have become so intertwined. It's difficult to break. It's not like what happened in, we talk about the war in Eastern Africa, two seas and Hutus, and you start saying, eh, he was my friend, but I have to kill him. We have not gotten to that point. Whether we want like it or not, we are not a fighting nation. We are not a fighting nation. If you even look at the fabric of Boko Haram, you know that most of them are not even northern Nigerians. They are from, from the fabric of West Africa and the northern African immigrants coming down this way. We are not really a troublesome country. You know, so at the end of the day, we ask ourselves, what are we really looking for? What we want to be free. Of who? My brother, my sister, we want to be free of our own people. We are, we are the cause of our problems. We want to be free to explore. Who is holding you back? Somebody says, ah, we can't build the federal government to stop us. Did you try it and they didn't allow you? I say, oh, why don't we do this Enugu on the Express Road? I mean, a state government partnered with a private investor and built a stretch from, from law school all the way to Lekbe. Public-private partnership. And they put toll gates, maybe two or three, collecting their money back. In a few years, they will give that, the road back. Lagos State is trying to discuss how to do Fourth Mainland Bridge. Lagos State is partnering with with investors. Fourth Mainland Bridge, Third Mainland Bridge was built by the military, federal government. Lagos State alone you know, wants to do Fourth Mainland Bridge. How many things have we decided to do internally? We are looking for a, a new bridge. We are not able to build one. We cannot do public-private partnership. 
We go to China every day to do business. Why don't we use that for our contacts and build our things? Put a train. Let the train be going up and down. Speed train. I can live in Aba and I can walk in, in Port Harcourt. I can walk in, in uh, Eboin. But we're not that integrated. We feel Eboin. People are backward. So how do you want to answer the question when you are not being true to yourself? We want a better life. Then, very simple, 2019, tell the people that are there, see my voter's card, I don't like this guy. Come back. All right, thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much for sharing your opinion with us. It was so nice having you. Thank you so much. My name remains Winnie Fred, and you're watching Blueprint Africa TV. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for amazing content. Thank you for watching.